How's it going, everybody? Beaverworks Diecast Racing, and we're going to build a Mustang that we're picking because I want to make an actual Shelby. Now, we're going to try working on this guy. It's got the wheels. This thing's getting everything. It's getting a wheel swap. It's getting a paint job. I tried to look for another casting because I didn't like the yellow window. But I don't have one. So this is the only one of this particular Mustang. I thought I had more. But this one's going to be the winner now. So we're going to do this one. Going to work with the yellow window. What the heck. Getting a wheel swap. Going to get some weight. Going to get stripped. And going to get turned into a Beaver Bridge race car. We are in. Well, so far, I think we got those things drilled out far enough. I always drill real slow, just so you can always leave a little bit of a lip to get in there afterwards. This looks like it's one of those castings that's just full of parts. There's the bottom. That's the kind of wheels I was hoping for right there. Because I'm going to use... That sounds so bad for the interior. Actually, it's only three parts. I thought it would be more parts. But it's one of those glass. The plastic goes right up through the front like that. And I wasn't, I'm not a fan of the yellow. But I'll have to work with it. All right, came apart good. I'm gonna drill out the donor while I'm here because we're not using those wheels. Now, I had to make up my mind on the donor. I thought it was gonna be this guy because it's got skinnier, smaller wheels there, but they don't spin that good. And they sound like crap. They don't pass the spin test, kids. Look at that. But they're the right size, and they're five spokes. I love the five spokes. But also have a custom auto. You all just saw this in the last video, didn't you? Excellent casting. I love this thing. And it's got the big gold right size. Five spokes that I like. And they're even the fat five spokes. Biggies on the back, tinies on the front, and it just happens to match. So we're using those. I'm going to drill out the donor and harvest those wheels while we're at it. All right, got our surrogate axles. I think the uh, next step we're going to have to do now is uh, break the paint off of this guy. So, you know, we'll just do the old boom, and now there he is. <laughs> All right. That is aircraft stripper. I used on that, and did a wonderful job. Now, I've had problems with my primer sticking to this. So I'm actually going to sand it down a little bit just to put some scuff into it. Not too much. Just enough to roughen up that surface a little bit. Then we'll hit it with some primer. And just do a little sanding. Just a little pieces of sandpaper. That's all you really need. Just scuff up that surface. 
make sure you actually get into the little corners and stuff because if your paint is going to peel that's where it's going to peel and says, this is just so you can get the primer to make sure it sticks when your primer sticks that means your paint's going to stick there is so much detail on this casting that I want to make sure it gets come comes out a little rivets mounting points door jams I do this because the etching primer is a little bit thinner than regular primer so it'll still show off all the little pieces inside there and it's the stuff that they recommend to put onto bare metal now assuming this is some kind of weird metal <laughs> it's not magnetic it's not anything what i understand is just a mix match it's almost a scrap alloy that they get these castings out of so It still works and it holds detail really good and that is what we like in die cast right primer should stick good now all right all right now I'm gonna drill some posts into this guy you've got a little dab of machine oil or some kind of lube that works very well in this operation. It's okay to go slow. Don't have to put any force on it. Just let the drill do the work. Good idea to pull out, clean your hole. Put another dab of oil in there. Carry on. I'm still not overly thrilled about the yellow windshield, but yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, time to get these wheels out, and uh, I like these. If I wanted to do a suspension car, and this has got those clips inside there that would help. But I don't think I'm going to make this a suspension car. It's because there's too much of the body that I'd have to hog out. So let's get these uh, clips off and get these axle out of there. Now those ones I want to keep. So we'll just take the screwdriver and wiggle them apart gently. They will snap. I don't want to snap them. We want to reuse these things, right? There we go. That one's opened up. Try and get this other one wiggled open here. Not a tragedy if you snap them, but life is a little easier reinstalling if you can keep the original hardware. Here we go. What? Out of the back. Same thing. And this one. Oh, well. That came out of there, didn't it? <laughs> All right. Looks like the clip is still okay-ish. I can't tell if that's been broken. Yeah, looks like it might be snapped. So we'll have to do something about that afterwards. One thing you got to remember is that when these axles are in there, they're actually sitting on these p 
pieces here, right? So even if you lose those clips, when you put her back together again, it's those parts right there that are actually holding it in as well. So you can repair those clips, but it's not going anywhere once you screw it down. Oh yeah, there we go. It jiggled in those other axles. There we go. That's going to look badass. That's much better. Right? Junky looking ones. Those cool see-through five spokes. Yeah. And they do have pretty good spin to them. This is unpolished. So we'll put a polish into them. And see if we can't make them fast. All right. All right, we got some primer and we're just starting to do some, trying to plot out the paint. I think what we're gonna do here is gonna be white, roughly, and a black. And then this two big areas is gonna be the red. We're gonna do the red first. Red, red. And we're gonna brush. We're gonna airbrush it. I got my new red, and we're gonna try this stuff out. And this color, I'll probably have to use the liquid mask when I want to cover this. Do the white. And the black, there's not a whole bunch of, so there's a slight chance I just might brush the black on. That right there, kids, is pretty good. We're just getting the red, and I'm going to carry the red down through the front, too. So I'm actually going to spray it off there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hit across on our small piece across the back, and we're ready to spray. ready to spray and get her over to the booth all right gonna do something with this yellow glass here a little etched out that little triangle that's where the uh window is so we're gonna take the side windows out take a little bit of the yellow off because that way if we do some interior work you're actually be able to see it so i'm just gonna rip that out of there with this dremel see how this works All right, there we go. Shave those windows out. Gotta be trimming, we'll do that later. All right, we're ready to mix some paint. So, we got, got some uh, thinner aid here. Now for the airbrush, I use one of these droppers. You don't need much. So far, maybe about up to that first little lip right there. A little blop in the bottom of the cup there. That should be good. You know, all I do is I just take a stick and just one drop at a time. That's all you need. I want to get to about a 60 40 mix 70 30 around in there so you just drip it in there good base coat all right that could be good there i'm just gonna start mixing that up I was found a good mixer. You can draw it up the sides of the clear and it covers. See how it covers? Right there. It's got some good coverage on the side. That means you're probably pretty good. And it doesn't look too thick. 
because it's got a spray. Mix, 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 mix. Cap back on. All right, we we'll order the booth. All right, got our handy bear. Got the handy, handy airbrush. Here, I tell you, I'm draw back on this, let you see what's going on. There it is. Excellent little invention. Grab it up off of eBay, folks. Works like a charm. There we go. Repeat it. Nice. Going on good. The front there. I want to put it on till it looks wet and then back off, dry it off a little bit, and go hit it again. Oh, this is covering nice. This is beauty red. This is a nice red. Pretty good. I'm gonna let her sit there for a minute. Oh yeah. All right, here's the coat. Not too shabby so far. I haven't taken the masking off yet because we've actually got the lacquer coat on there now. And it's uh, nice and dry. But this is an experiment I'm gonna try to see if it works. If it works, I'll actually release this video. <laughs> and that is, I'm going to do the liquid mask now before I take the masking off. And then I'm gonna come back after it's all dry and razor blade it. And then Peel the tape. So I'm going to do some liquid mask on it now first. See how it works out. This stuff comes out so thick and goopy. According to the ad, you can let this stuff dry and cut it like you do masking tape. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to layer this stuff on, then we're going to cut it, and we'll peel the tape, and hopefully it won't peel the mask, or the paint. And if it does, I'll cry, but I'll fix it. I've been trial and error with this stuff, I'm trying to master it because it just looks so neat. And there we go. That should be good. I'm going to hit a little bit here. In the front as well. All right, that's it, kids. And we're just going to let that uh, set do its thing, get it dry, and then I'll come back and uh, chop it and peel the tape and see how it's all going to work out. All right, kids, more moment of truth. Let's see if this works. Um, I've done the uh, liquid mask and everything else like that, but I haven't done this all in one procedure at once. So I'm going to get this out of its current wrapping, but I'm going to come along razor blade here and cut the line. Cut that line right there. Real careful. Watch this. See what I mean? And that's gonna break all of the layer. Paint. Lacquer. Liquid mask. All at once. And give it a good smooth edge in theory if you can cut in a, cut in a straight line which sometimes having problems doing right now come on yeah, 
Let me trick the cutting lines like this is try and look ahead where your cut's gonna be and only cut once, so <laughs> This obviously takes some practice. All right, I think that was the money right there. Hopefully it'll carry on through there. Do the same thing on this side. I think I walk you all over the place again. I think that was it. So that means we can get the blue stuff off first. It's not actually touching any of the surfaces. It's just on there. Keeps gray. And now these guys can come off. And hey, it almost, almost on a couple of spots there you have to clean up. And there are a couple of spots to clean up, but not too bad. Not too bad. All right. So, in theory, that means I should just be able to knock the back half off for the black. And then we can spray all the white without it getting into the red. All right. Here you go, kids. White time. All right, good enough. We'll let that sit for a little bit, and then uh, I'm going to go clean my cup out. And then we'll see if that uh, red will peel off the mask. All right. All right, kids, moment of the truth. See how this works out. I'm going to do the whole cut and peel thing again. So around the edge where the... liquid mask is on the red well ready to go after that fiasco so as you can see it absolutely destroyed my paint job. So I am going to go back and give it another coat of red and I'm just going to tape it off. And as far as the liquid mask stuff goes, um, it's crap. <laughs> I'm probably not going to be using it again. I'll just stick with tape. I've tried it a few different times and, uh, there's got to be a knack to it that you got to have. And that just wasn't it for me. Plus, I got some orange peel on that red. The white's not so bad. The white can stay. But uh, I think I'm going to mask it off with the tape and hit that red again. One more coat over top of that. Get rid of all that imperfection that happened trying to get that stupid liquid mask off there. All right, so jump ahead a little bit here, and here's what it looks like now. So I did exactly what I was talking about. Went back and taped the red off this time, and get some nice clean lines. I've been working on this. They just keep getting better. And I put a splash of black on the back, too. That's just to uh, offset the chassis 
is the chassis on this casting goes way up. It's like half the back of the car and it's black plastic. So instead of putting a full coat over the plastic, because that can be difficult, we we're just going to float with this guy. And we'll get into the decal work. Because we've got some good decals, a couple of different suppliers, and we're going to decorate this thing up as a Shelby Cobra race car. Yeah, yeah? Okay. All right, did a little bit of body. Now we're going to do some chassis work here. Now, my method of doing this is usually I like to cut a nice square right out of the bottom there. Something like this. That's one I've hacked out of another one. You see where you sketched it out there? About that thick, and I'm going to put a new floor in of that, which is a nice melted hunk of birdshot, and it's going into the floor. <laughs> All right, so first trick bust out your Dremel if you're one of these uh, saw bits, they work pretty good doing this. Got to be careful and then come back and get the corners. All right. I'm going to put my uh, glasses on here. I can see what I'm doing. And away we go. All right, those are corners I'm going to go in there and cut out by hand. It's pretty close. All right. <clears throat> Give me. All right, kids, we got it out there. Came back and hit with the, uh, these little handy clippers. They got that little angle. Get in there. Clean them up nice. And there's the square we have to work with. The bottom is out. All right. This part's pretty straightforward. We get our hunk down there and find a good comfy spot. We can put this on top. Break out the Sharpie. And then, yeah, that's all we're going to do. We basically just have to rough this out. It doesn't have to be dead on because we're going to trim it afterwards but basically that's what we're looking for now, how am i going to cut it out of this great big huge hunk right here you don't drill you don't want to drum it you don't want to do anything that's going to make it blow all over the place because it is lead. so i'm going to use a pair of bolt cutters works great so just give me a second here and i cut it off screen there because my uh bolt cutters are kind of behind me in a scuzzy part of the basement that uh, is not within camera shot. But as you see there, it's not like a tight fit, but that doesn't matter. But that's what it's going to look like. And that is the slug that I replaced the floor with. And the, this piece is maybe a little bit thicker, but not much than the piece we hacked out of the bottom. So, means that I might have to come back with the Dremel and shave a little part off the bottom of this to compensate. Not sure, we'll have to see how it sits in there. Now, to get this thing to sit in there, what we're gonna do, is this is a job for the epoxy, my mid cure 15 minute epoxy. And what we're going to do, I take a piece of tape, 
tape off the bottom, drop this inside there, and then use this stuff, pull it up. All right. Yeah. Then you take your chunk. Mix up some epoxy, pour it in there. Mix, 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 mix. Stir, 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 mix, 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 stir, 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 stir. See that gooey color right there? That's what you're going for. That nice amber creamy. And you got good mix going on. Once it touches you, you just kind of worm it around. Make a nice bead. Glue bead. Go through all that before you would have to touch down. Just kind of work it in. All right, let a couple hours float past. That was pretty quick, eh? All right, take a look what this looks like now. Nice and glassy up on top. All right. It's not sticking out. Right in there. Now, I'm probably going to have to take the Dremel and shave a little off the bottom of that. Right here. I think it that sit in there flat. I think. Maybe a bit more, but get the idea. All right. I'll just clean that up. And it should sit nice. All right. So there's the uh, putting the weight in the chassis part over with there. Now we're going to deal with the polish up these axles before we get them back in there again. All right, axle time, kids. Swapped out the to the little polisher on here. And the trick I've usually tried with these guys, you kind of pinch hold them. And then you just run it around a few times. And then make sure you wipe off the excess when you're done. And then you've got the compound right here. I have no idea what grit or anything else like that is. It just works. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's pretty good for that. You can see when it starts to get all shiny and 
pretty looking. Make sure you clean that off good. And there. Yeah, you got a good polish on that, haven't we? Just to do a comparison here. Here's the polished side, right? Cruising along pretty good. Look at that. That's not bad. You go over to the non-polished side. Yeah, look at how fast that stops now, right? Oh. And the polished side. That's a pretty fat difference, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. Same deal for the other side. All right, now we gotta do is put these axles back in and we're not gonna do any of the glue or anything else like that because we should be able to use the original clips. I brought them out. So that's all I'm gonna do is try and bend these guys back in. Let's see how good that holds. In place and remember it's that body insert that comes down and actually keeps them there so because this thing's got the great big holder inners there having the little plastic fold downs here on there is just an added bonus but like I said, oops, <laughs> shaking the camera. At the beginning there, and if you're able to get these things down without snapping them, you can usually bend them back over into shape onto the axle to hold them back in there. Like that. All right, after much deliberation, looks like we are going to settle on this pile right here, including my uh, customs from Rust Belt Racing, who does an absolute excellent job. And I got the other ones here for my custom Hot Wheels. Another great company for doing live. They got lots of uh, the Hot Rodder stuff and the, sh the Cobra. Mustang packs, Dodge packs. I just happened to get a Mustang pack, so I've got a bunch of Mustangs that I'm going to build <laughs> and try these out. But uh, you want custom work done. Rust Belt does excellent job. Like, I mean, really good stuff. These things are really easy to use. So we're going to start applying all of this. All right. All right, I'm going to cut in the middle here, show you putting one of these things in. What we got so far. Not too much liquid on there, jumped right up on me. That looks pretty, pretty good. Straight enough? I'll notice that a distance. <laughs> Alright, there's another one on. Alright, here we go. We got them on, and it is fresh out of the lacquer bath. So, it's got a coating on it. And we are ready to assemble this. All right. All right, let's give it a shot. 
see what it's going to look like. All right, so we got the uh, shot of lacquer on there, so it's good and protected now. Got some decals in on the windshield. Guess I'm still not a big fan of the yellow, but I think because of the rims on the chassis, I've got the gold. I think it's going to look pretty cool. All right, get the screws inside there. I still want to paint the bottom. But that's what we're dealing with right there, folks. And there it is. screws inside there and uh, maybe rip it down the track a couple of times but there it is it's got some beauty shots <laughs> 